Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please stand and welcome the First Lady of the United States, First Lady Pat Nixon. Thank you so much. Oh my golly, what a wonderful group. Thank you so much for coming today. It's an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to be here. And how wonderful of you to come. This is really terrific. So as you know, I am Pat Nixon. And what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about my life when I was growing up, where I went to school, uh, I got married, and my years in the White House. And then I'd like to open it up for questions from all of you. So I'm going to start at the very beginning, the very, very, very beginning, when I was born. I was born in a very small town called Ely, E-L-Y, Nevada. And my dad was a copper miner, and my mother, Kate, was a wonderful housewife. I was born on March 12, 1916. And I'm sorry, I was born on March 16, 1912. I'm sorry. Ah. And um, my mother wanted to name me Thelma Catherine Ryan, but I was born very close to March 17th, which was, does anybody know March 17th? St. Patrick's Day, exactly, St. Patrick's Day. And so my dad, Will, wanted to call me his St. Patrick's babe in the morning, so hence the name Pat. As I said, my dad was a copper miner, but he was really getting very tired of mining in the copper fields, and so what he did, he wanted to try farming, and he moved the, fa excuse me, he moved the family to Artesia, and it was really fun because we had all kinds of fruits and vegetables, and I even had my own little spot where I could grow fruits and vegetables. Does anybody here have a garden? Do you? What do you grow? Tomatoes. How about you? Strawberries. Good for you. Isn't it fun? It was really wonderful. And um, my two brothers and I really enjoyed being in Artesia. Well, I was at Excelsior High School, and I was a freshman, in, in, and uh, my mother got very seriously ill. She got a kidney disease, and unfortunately, she died when I was a freshman in school. So I took over the chores of the house. I took over the cleaning and the washing and the cooking and all the things to help out my dad. But then when I was a senior at Excelsior High School, my dad got tuberculosis. He got sick and he died. So it was really hard without either parents. We didn't have a lot of money, but we had a wonderful, wonderful family. And we worked, as I said, we worked very, very hard. I knew that I wanted to go to college and I wanted to be a teacher. So I enrolled at Fullerton Junior College. I had enough money saved up from doing some jobs to get into Fullerton Junior College. And then I did some jobs. I drove a couple back east. They didn't want to drive their car. So I got in the car and drove with them. It was really fun. Anybody here driven across the country? So you know, you know what it's like. It was wonderful. We got to New York, and you have two. Oh my goodness, and you're, how old are you? Five. You're five, and you've driven across the country. Wonderful. So you've seen more than I have. That's true. <laughs> so we drove across the country, and when I arrived in New York, I stayed in New York for a while doing some jobs. I was an x-ray technician, and I worked in a store. Anything I could to save enough money to be able to go on to college. Well, I got really lucky. I saved enough money and transferred from Fullerton Junior College. I wanted to get a scholarship, so I applied to the University of Southern California. Anybody in here graduated from USC? Yay! Yes, stand up. No, I just kidding. <laughs> it, was, it was a wonderful experience. I was accepted on a scholarship, and I majored in education because, as I said, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, I also, then when I graduated from USC, I applied for my first teaching job at Whittier High School and got hired there, so it was wonderful. 
I was teaching filing, bookkeeping, shorthand, and business English. And I was loving my students. Anybody have a very strict teacher? You have a good strict teacher? Good for you. I was fair, but I was very strict, and I loved my students, and we really enjoyed each other. The principal of the school came to me one day, and he said, Pat, I would very much like you to get involved in some after-school activities. So, and you can think of an activity, or you can join an activity, or you can, hello? <laughs> or you can participate in an activity. And our football team at Whittier High School did not have a spirit club. They didn't have a real good rah-rah support group. And so some of my colleagues and I, we started that group. It was the pep group and the support group for the football team. Then my principal came in. I absolutely love this man. He said, Pat, you've now done volunteer work after school or, and, and in school. I'd like you to do some community volunteer work. And he said, there's a theater group and why don't you go and maybe audition? Well, I thought, well, you know, I'd volunteered in, I'd done some theater group at Excelsior High School, and I really, anybody here do theater? Anybody involved in theater? You are too, you have a garden and you do theater? My goodness, <laughs> good for you. So you like acting. It's fun, isn't it? Do you sing too? You sing and dance? Oh, you do lots of things. You're very valuable people, that's wonderful. Theater is very fun, so I went to audition, and it was a murder mystery suspense, and I got the part, and it was very, very, it was a wonderful, wonderful play. And a man had graduated from Duke Law School in North Carolina. He was originally from Yorba Linda. He came also because it was suggested that by his boss that he get involved in some community work, so he actually came and auditioned for The Dark Tower. Anybody know who this man was? Yes. Exactly. Good for you. Richard Milhouse Nixon. And I, I, I liked him very much. He would talk about going far to faraway places and that he really wanted to make a, a difference in his community. We went out for coffee. He would drive me home. And one night, I'd hardly met him at all. He said, you may not know this but someday I'm going to marry you. I thought he was nuts. <laughs> but I, I really found myself liking him a lot. And we went out for two years. One night we went down to Dana Point, which is not too far, and he had a beautiful, beautiful bouquet of flowers. And attached to one of the flowers was, guess what? A ring. And he asked me to marry him. And I did love him, and so it was easy to say yes. So we were married on June 21st, 1940, right here in Riverside. As I said, he really wanted to get involved in his country. And he was practicing law, but an opportunity came up for him to get involved in a congressional race. Does anybody know what a congressman does? That's a big question. Anybody? From the floor back to the chairs. Anybody know what a congressman does, a person who's in Congress? Sorry? Right, represents our country, and there are many congressmen from a state. Well, he actually entered the race, we talked about it, and he won. And it was exciting because he won in 1946, and that was the year that our first daughter, Tricia, was born. And it was very exciting times, and he went on then to run for the Senate. Anybody know how many senators there are in the United States? Excellent, you get an A. <laughs> because there are two senators from every state. So he went on to run for the Senate, and he won that. And our second daughter, Julie, was born in 1948. And then, as you know, he became vice president, and then the 37th president of the United States in 1968. Well, he was elected president, and I was not elected first lady, but because he became president, I then became the first lady. What does a first lady do? Anybody have? Yes. You know what a first lady does? Take a guess. No? <laughs> it's kind of... Okay, a first lady actually tries to set a role model for the people in the country. She acts as the official hostess of the White House. She organizes and she plans the events in the White House. 
and she uh, attends all the official, uh, the official events, dinners at the White House. So it was really wonderful, and I think probably one of the highlights of being First Lady is that in the White House, in the dining room, could only accommodate 150 people. So we wanted to have a big event that far exceeded the ability to have 150 people. So we actually took the White House from Washington, D.C., if you will, to the Century Plaza Hotel in Los Angeles, where we welcomed the astronauts who had come back from the moon. Big question here. If anybody gets this right, does anybody know the name of the three astronauts? Or at least one. Yes. Excellent. Bravo to you. Very good. Anybody know a second one? So we have Neil Armstrong. Anybody have a second one? Yes. No, but you're you're close. That's part of the part of the moon, part of the moon uh, exploration. His first name's Buzz. Buzz Aldrin. And the thir third one is Michael. Michael Collins, excellent. So Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were the astronauts who'd come back from the moon. We had a huge, huge dinner at the, White, at the Western White House, if you want to call it, and we had most of the congressmen, most of the senators, most of the governors of the United States, and also we had people from all over the world come. So it was a most exciting e evening for us. The other things, too, that a first lady does is uh, people were my project, people are my project, and I wanted to keep in touch with the people in the United States, so I don't have, I only just have a few letters today that I brought, but usually in the, during the week I got between 300 and 400 letters, and they were wonderful. They, they asked everything from what's the name of your dog, to how do I get involved in politics, to how do you how do you raise a family, because we had two daughters, how do you combine your travels, all kinds of things, even to the questions of, can you please send me your favorite recipe? So I spent between three and four hours a day writing back to the people of the country, and I was able to keep my finger on the pulse of the country as well because of what they wrote me in the letters. So I really enjoyed doing that. The other thing, too, is I wanted to promote volunteerism. How many people in this room are volunteers? Oh my goodness, tell me what you volunteer. Pardon me? At the school. Good for you. I, I saw so many hands up. I didn't see hardly, yes, how about you? Habitat for Humanity, good for you. Good for you. How hard is it to volunteer? How hard is it to volunteer? It's very easy. What do you have to do to volunteer? I have a live audience here. This is so wonderful. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> All you have to do is say yes. Where do you volunteer? What do you... Good for you. So it's not hard. Does it take a lot of time? Yes, if you wanted to. If you wanted to. Excellent answer. Yes. And how about you, sir? Good for you. Bravo. Yes. And let's give a hand to the wonderful docents who are here. They have red jackets on, and some of them have brown jackets on, and wonderful Sandy Quinn, who's the director of the library. So we're, we're very, 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 very grateful to the volunteers. Well, that was, that is my passion, is promoting volunteerism, because as you said, it can take as much time or as it can take as less time as you want. But everybody can be a volunteer. I heard church volunteer, school volunteer, political volunteer. Where's another volunteer? Soup kitchen, excellent, yes, it's so wonderful that you do that. With somebody in the back. Sorry? Your mom's club, yes, very, very valuable. And also in the hospitals, you can volunteer. So all it takes is one word, yes, I want to volunteer, and you go ahead and do it. Anybody down here volunteer? Not yet. You volunteer, what do you do? Not yet. Okay, so I wanted to promote volunteerism. My predecessor, had, Lady Bird Johnson, had done a wonderful job of beautification, and I wanted to do something different. So I wanted to actually develop the public parks and, and go with, as I said, volunteerism. And the, um, 
Some of the other things, too, that we did in the White House was we had, in this East Room, we actually had non-denominational services. And one of our dearest friends was an evangelist. His name was Billy Graham. Has anybody heard about him? Yes, he's a very, very famous person. So he actually gave the services here. Another thing that I wanted to do was uh, Mrs. Kennedy had been wonderful in starting to secure furniture, carpets, china that had left the White House and she wanted to get it back. And so I wanted to follow what she had done and continue what she done, had done. So I worked with a wonderful man named Clem Conger and we were able to get things like uh, President Adams' chairs, President Monroe's desk, some magnificent paintings. I think there were about 500 in all. And that's, so that was one of the things that I was really happy doing. Um, the other thing too, as you can see, that we had many, many events at the White House uh, from uh, securing the furniture to um, actually when I came into the White House, we didn't have ramps installed. And so people who had special needs weren't able to get into the White House before I came. That was wonderful, and they were then able to access it. Uh, also, people who were blind hadn't been able to actually come into the White House and to touch the draperies or to be able to sit in the seats or to be able to run their hands along some of the furniture. So we had tours for the blind. And then we also had an, an incredible evening where we welcomed the prisoners of war back from Vietnam, which was one of the star-studded evenings of the White House with their family and their friends. I remember standing outside on the balcony uh, after the evening was over and just seeing the prisoners of war leaving. I remember just saluting them and telling them how incredibly proud I was of them, that I was so proud to be an American, and I thanked them profusely for being of service to our country so that we can be free and do our own thinking. It was a spectacular evening with the Star Spangled Banner, uh, the Marine Corps band playing, the flag waving. It was just, oh, whoops, there goes my microphone. It was just in an absolutely incredible evening. Uh, some of the other things that we did too were that I was, here's the disabled, and uh, I, I was a Girl Scout growing up. Anybody here a Girl Scout? Good for you. Anybody a Girl Scout leader? Bravo. Wonderful. So I loved being a Girl Scout. I had them to the White House. I loved hearing about all their merit badges and all the hard work that they had done. So we had the Girl Scouts come to the White House. The other thing that was really fun, ever since I was very little, no matter how big or how small our yard was, on Easter, we had an Easter egg hunt. Have any of you done an Easter egg hunt? I did. All of you, oh my goodness. Was it fun? Did you, did you get a lot of eggs? Yes, did you eat a lot of eggs? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we had, we had an Easter egg roll on the White House lawn that was very fun. Probably the most significant to me event uh, in the White House was the wedding of our daughter, Tricia. She got married on July 12, 1971. And usually, weather in July is hot, and there usually is no rain. Right. That's what we all thought. So I got up very early on the morning of July 12th, making sure that everything was ready. And I took the curtains back in the bedroom. Have you ever looked at something where you thought if you just close it or put it back and you open it again, it won't be there? <laughs> that was the rain. And I thought, this cannot be. It's July 12th. There was no rain forecast. And maybe if I just close the curtains and, and uh, just ignore it, it'll go away. But it didn't. And I thought, what are we going to do? We had all the people coming. The, it was a, going to be a garden wedding with a beautiful gazebo that you can see outside. And I thought, OK, what are we going to do? We had maybe people were going to go in and clean off all the chairs and get all the water off because it was outside. So it's now 9 o'clock in the morning, and it's still raining. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, and I got a knock on the door. I opened the door and it's my wonderful staff. And they said, Mrs. Nixon, I said, I know, it's raining. We have enough umbrellas. They were the most incredible staff in the world. We have enough umbrellas to be able to cover the people coming in. 
But once they're outside, we don't have any covering, so what, sh what should we all do? The only thing I could think to say was pray. So we gathered around, and one of the staff members, <laughs> I'll never forget the prayer, it was, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this rain. It's wonderful that you made it, but can you take it away? Because <laughs> the wedding is going to start at 12 noon, and we need to get ready. So we all said a prayer, and we were just hoping, we were just really hoping for a miracle. Well, at 1030, it's, it was just drizzling. At 11 o'clock, it stopped drizzling. At 11.15, the sky started clearing. At 11.30, the sun was coming out. At 11.45, we were getting ready to walk down the aisle. At 12 noon, our daughter Tricia and her husband Ed walked down the aisle in sunset. So miracles do <laughs> happen, but that was really an extraordinary event. Some of the things that I enjoy doing when I'm not actually working at the White House or working on events, I still love to garden. And I think that went back to my early days as a very young child. And you know what it's like with your strawberries and, and, and the things that you're growing, yes. So I love gardening. And I got lucky enough to have a rose named after me. It's called the Pat Nixon Rose. Isn't it beautiful? So really, really thank, thankful for that. As, as you know, when my husband was saying um, he wanted to go to faraway places, he wanted to go make a difference, well, I also wanted to go to faraway places. And one of the opportunities that afforded me was when I went to Africa. It was a 10,000-mile trip, eight days, and I went to Ghana. You can see how wonderfully fun the people were. I went to Ghana, I went to Liberia, and I went to the Ivory Coast. And I met with the women of the country. We talked about our various issues. We talked specifically about education, how important it is to stay in school, and the things that we'd like our children to learn. It was a wonderful trip. I came back from that, that wonderful, wonderful time of being gone. And then we were at Camp David. We were celebrating our anniversary. And I turned on the news. At Camp David is kind of like a retreat where you can just, I can seriously take off my skirt, put on a pair of pants, and go kick a ball or walk through, walk and take a hike. But I remember uh, turning on the news and seeing this incredible news report about this devastation, this horrific earthquake in Lima, Peru. Anybody know where Lima, Peru is? Anybody know where Peru is? South America, good for you. Far away, far away. But the news was absolutely horrible. And it was the worst devastation in the history of the country. And I said to my husband, I said, we have to do something. And he said, you know, Pat, if you want to go, it would be wonderful. So I will get a plane. And I said, we have to have supplies. We have to have Band-Aids. We have to have flashlights. We have to have blankets. We have to have food. We have to have so many things. And my husband was wonderful. We loaded an Air Force One plane with 91 tons of all the supplies that we needed and I flew to Lima, Peru. Well, the earthquake just didn't happen in a flat Lima, Peru. If you know about Peru, there's very, very tall mountains. And this earthquake happened at 22,000 feet above sea level. And so what I did was I just I had to walk to some of the areas. Some of the, um, some of the wonderful people helped us getting the supplies and all the things that we needed to the people who were so severely, severely traumatized. And, 50,000 people died. 800,000 people lost their homes. And so we were really able to help and to be able to administer to the people. I think I, what did I do? I just cut it off. I'm OK. The other, the other trip, as you know, probably the most historic trip of all was the trip to China. Exactly. Anybody know the year? Live there. You live in you live in China. What part of? For heaven's sakes, what city? Twelve years. Twelve years. Bless your heart. Oh my goodness! You must have some wonderful stories. Incredible. Well, as you know, China is very far away, and they have many, many people. They have about eight hundred 
million people in China, and no foreigners had been there since 1949. And so my husband wanted to establish relationships. He wanted to open the door, if you will, to China. And he'd been working very, very hard, and finally it happened. And we were invited by Chow and Mai to go to China. I remember landing there, and it was really like landing on the moon. And because it was just so different. Uh, maybe if you're familiar with the Great China Wall, huge wall all around the city, and it kept the it kept the enemies out and the people within safe. And one of the things you can see from the moon, one of the few things you can see from the moon is the Great China Wall. It is enormous. Well, when we first arrived, Chow and Lai was quite serious. However, he had a phenomenal translator, a woman who had a great, great sense of humor. And she would ask Chow and Lai to tell some maybe funny story. And so he told us some stories about pandas, or he told us of, about one of his pets or what. And so we came back and told him a story about our dog, King Timaho, who was a water dog, was an Irish setter, who loved to escape from the White House. And when he did, the, the tour bus came along, and you could see Tim, Timaho swimming in the White House fountain. He thought that was so funny, and you can see that he's just absolutely regaling with laughter. So when we were there about three or four days, he was just so lightened up. And you can see the translator in the back. She was having as much fun as all of us were. Talk about really uniting countries and establishing relations, we did. And it was an episodic trip for me too because I don't know if any of you here have experienced acupuncture. Anybody? I had never seen acupuncture in my life. I had no idea what it was like. You are so good to sit here. You're so good. I just have to tell you for a moment, you're just all so good. <laughs> the acupuncture was just inserting needles, and they did, a, they did a specific procedure where they removed a tumor from a man's neck, only using needles, no anesthesia, no nothing. And he was completely awake. It was, just, it was absolutely amazing. Also, I experienced the food, which was delicious. I went to the summer palace, and being a teacher, I went to the schools, and I taught the children some songs of Row, Row, Row Your Boat, Mary Had a Little Lamb, we did Itsy Bitsy Spider. That's a fun song, isn't it? The children loved it, and they also taught me songs. Um, so it was, it was an incredible, incredible trip. I love being First Lady. I am so blessed, so blessed to represent our country. I love my husband. I love my family, I love my country, and I'm so happy that all of you could come today. I also believe that even if somebody really can't understand your language, they can tell if you have love in your heart. I have so much love in my heart for all of you today. I wish all of you the best, and I wish God's blessings on you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, First Lady Pat Nixon. Um, is this mic working too? Okay, good. Um, now we're going to do some questions. So uh, which one of you has the first question? Anybody? Yes, question. I was the first. The great question. What grade are you in? And he's your... <laughs> Okay, I like that. And your name is? Austin, that's a wonderful. And what's your name? Your name? Okay. <laughs> he, Austin's asking the question. Okay, the, I was first lady from 1968. From 1968 to 1974, I was first lady. Okay, thank you for that. That's a great question. I also wanted to tell you all that you're so incredibly good and that uh, school is starting soon. So I know you're all going to listen to your teachers and your teachers are going to all listen to the students. Yes, you had a question. Did the kids ever have play dates in the White House? They did. That's a great question. They did. And they played all kinds of games like Monopoly. <laughs> okay. Yes, another question?
my daughter went to the Finch School and also to, good question, Finch School, maybe one of the Dos, the Friends School. They, I believe they both, sorry, they went, both went to the Friends School. Thank you. Anyone yes. else? Yes, thank you for asking. I have four grandchildren. I have um, two granddaughters and two grandsons. Yes, one great grandson. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, now you're really getting me. <laughs> Let's make up a few. <laughs> Oh, I know he, the dog was King Timaho, and he was really great. As I told you, he escaped on regular basis and was, you know, found in the White House, either the, the fountain or sometimes even in the swimming pool. Yes. Yes. What do you remember about Checkers? Checkers was a really sweet dog and uh, a very, very great pet. And I love dogs. I really do. As I said, we had Checkers and we had King Timaho. I just remember the name of the cats. Sasha, Vicky, Stellar, Mighty. That's four. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> How about Brownie? Okay. <laughs> good. Yes. You're so sweet to ask. Um, I. I liked Oleg Cassini very much, but a lot of times if I could escape, if I could actually go, the Secret Service usually, well, always came with me, but I would just find a store. I had a very good friend who lived in California, and we would actually just go out and go to this store, and I would find clothes there. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for that question. I think, thank you. Um, probably my, one of my favorites was Golda Meir. She had been a school teacher, as you know, in Minnesota, and then gone back to her country and elected to, 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 as prime minister. So I very much liked her. Uh, she was tough, but she was also very feminine. And I noticed when we sat next to each other, we actually talked about what color of nail polish we were wearing. She was really a hoot as well. <laughs> Could I, could I add to that, Mrs. Nixon, sure. if you don't mind? Um, one other that I'd like to mention is uh, someone she met when she accompanied the president to Beijing, to China, on that historic trip in 1972. And when the president was meeting with, with Chairman Mao and the Chinese leaders in the Forbidden City, Mrs. Nixon went to the uh, Beijing Zoo. And she saw, for the first time, these big... They're called giant pandas. Thank you. And she thought these were great animals, and we didn't really have any in the United States. So that night, when you were sitting next to Premier Joe and Lai at the state banquet, he said, Mrs. Nixon, did you enjoy your visit to the zoo? And you started talking about giant pandas, and he said, well, China will send some to the United States. So now they're at the National Zoo in Washington, they're in San Diego, they're in St. Louis, they're in Atlanta, and Mrs. Nixon is the one who triggered uh, China into giving us those pandas. So when you go to the zoo in those cities, you've got to go say hello to the pandas. They're wonderful animals, and we, in our exhibit on Mrs. Nixon next uh, opening March 15th, we're going to display one of the crates that these pandas came to the United States in, and they're about this high, and they have little peepholes, and you would never use that for e even your own pets today, but that was in 1972, 40 years ago. Um, thank you so much, Sandy. And I'd like to really express thanks to Sandy Quinn, who is the executive director of the Nixon Library, who's done an absolutely amazing job, and it helped me you. fill in when I forgot to mention the thank pandas. You. <laughs> I, were you? Yes. Did you, were you raising your hand? 
Oh, she was stretching. All right. Um, well, if we've if we've concluded the. Uh, you have a question. We have one more. Thank you. Thank you. That's an excellent question. And you saw by the last slide, I'd also like to thank Jonathan Mavroides, who's in the back, who put together this whole slide presentation. And I'd also like to keep Sandy, thank Sandy for adding on the pan, as I completely forgot. So thank you very much for that. You saw the last slide here of President Nixon and me. We were walking. We, we took a lot of walks. And when we walked, we talked about everything from family to checkers, the dog, to, uh, you know, how mundane things and then some serious things. One of the things were when he took office there were hardly any women in elected positions. And one of the things that was near and dear to me because of my um, in trying to get people involved in volunteering was to get more women to run for political office and that's something that he did do. Yes. That's a great question. Thank you. All right. Um, We'll and conclude the, the uh, questions now, and, and if you would like to meet Mrs. Nixon, she'll be right over here, and the docents will help line up the youngsters for photographs. If any of you have cameras, if you just come out in the front here, we'll do some pictures. Then there's coloring in the back and punch and cookies. So thank you for coming, and please come up and get your picture. Thank you, Mrs. Nixon. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah.